थैंक यू एंड थैंक यू प्रोफेसर विश्वजीत धार जी रिस्पेक्टेड मुचकुंद दुबे जी विश्वजीत धार जी नित्यानंद जी प्रोफेसर अतुल शर्मा जी एंड ऑल ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स प्रेजेंट हेयर इन दिस वेबिनार इन फैक्ट आई ऑलवेज लुक फॉरवर्ड to understand the budget uh, from different perspectives uh, especially uh, i always wait for the uh, csd uh, to organize uh, the program for budget discussions uh, this year we are missing uh, professor uh, hak uh, especially uh, for his insights into the agriculture aspect of the budget um, so uh, my um, my take on the budget uh, uh, always i try to analyze and uh, look at the budget uh, from the perspective of uh, swadeshi so i was very happy uh, when i looked into the budget speech and uh, found that no mention of fdi has been made uh, mostly in the uh, in the years of uh, uh, post uh, uh, liberalization post new economic policy every budget we used to find with a uh, lot of praise and uh, expectations about fdi and all uh, sorts of measures which could be adopted to attract fdi uh, and we have seen in the yesterday years what has happened and uh, uh, since the days of uh, uh, 1991 and uh, the uh, uh, we find always uh, the word protection was always always avoided and it was considered to be a very bad word uh, i'm happy since uh, uh, 2018 since the uh, uh, since uh, february 2, 2018 the word protection has been used and uh, it was said in so many words by the finance minister that we are raising tariffs to protect the domestic industry so uh, uh, and uh, this has again this has continued uh, since 2018 and in this year as well uh, we find a lot of uh, um, talk about the protection and the raising of tariffs and so on so uh, Uh, i always uh, try to see uh, what uh, uh, this budget can do you know moving both away from the the legacy of uh, uh, nehru as well as the legacy of the uh, dr manmohan singh and uh, the Uh, legacy of uh, wto influenced uh, economic policies or world bank influenced economic policies so uh, uh, i uh, uh, my friends will appreciate here that uh, mm, since the days of nehru uh, the lot of uh, public expenditure on capital a uh, lot of public ex- capital expenditure used to be made uh, those days to build uh, more and more of public sector undertakings uh, but uh, i'm not uh, trying to uh, you know uh, give any uh, any judgment on that whether it that was a good or a bad policy but uh, that definitely was uh, you know uh, was crowding out the private investment uh, because uh, when you have uh, more and more of public sector undertakings producing different okay. types of uh, goods mm-hmm. and services obviously the private investment in those sectors will, will get uh, hampered and, and that that was basically a policy of uh, the making public expenditure 
and crowding out of uh, the um, uh, the private investment but this time when the when the finance uh, minister was uh, making uh, the budget speech she said very clearly that we are raising this uh, public expend capital expenditure uh, by 35% uh, as compared to the budget estimates and as uh, expected uh, mm, uh, since there has been uh, an increase in the uh, capital expenditure during the during the current year so the the uh, increase is uh, approximately 24 to 25% of the revised estimates but still still this is this is a big increase and uh, almost everybody amongst us uh, we have been appreciative of this increase in public expenditure uh, um, uh, public capital expenditure so uh, the very point which i'm trying to make here is that uh, if you if you increase public expand capital expenditure and uh, if that leads to an increase in the overall uh, capital formation in the country and uh, most of the speakers here we we have been uh, you know very wary of uh, declining uh, gross capital formation in the country fixed capital formation in the country and as the numbers are also suggesting uh, we uh, we have come down from nearly 38 9 39% uh, to early 27 28% of the uh, uh, or uh, approximately 30% uh, if we take the overall gross capital formation so uh, this is this was a big decline and the, uh, everybody was worried about it and if if we, if this uh, capital expenditure by the government uh, can crowd in the private investment so uh, we will be we should be able to uh, fill that that uh, gap which which has occurred and which is impacting our uh, overall growth uh, as well as the uh, the state of uh, uh, state of public services uh, and state of uh, overall infrastructure in the country and uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, there has been a big reform um, in fact uh, in in the past we uh, the the reforms were uh, from me reforms were not very welcome because uh, those reforms used to be in in attracting more and more of uh, more and more and more of fdi or uh, or uh, reducing the tariffs to attract more and more of uh, imports so that uh, that never used to be uh, uh, very uh, mm, uh, welcome especially from the point of view of sudesh jagrat much but this time we we find that reform uh, which which has occurred and in fact this, which has found place in terms of uh, uh, the expenditure part is the gati shakti and in fact uh, we this whole gati shakti uh, project uh, needs to be understood and uh, uh, and this can this can really help us in reducing our logistic costs and uh, uh, and uh, our country uh, if we are failing in uh, raising uh, exports uh, is basically because of the high log logistic costs as well so this uh, gati shakti project which uh, the finance minister has uh, mentioned uh, again and again in the budget uh, needs to be understood and if the money does not go into the uh, into one or the other kind of infrastructure projects and rather than that if the gati shakti project uh, can be taken up in in an integrated manner Uh, you know the rail road air uh, digitalization and everything you know getting integrated um, to reduce the logistic costs so that can really be a uh, very helpful uh, in reducing the logistic costs and thereby the competitiveness of indian uh, uh, exports and also the domestic production
vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, imported goods. So uh, mm, that uh, point I wanted to make that uh, this goes well uh, with our uh, with our objective of uh, increasing the growth because if the capital formation the desired capital formation is not taking place uh, both by the private sector as well as by the public sector then uh, the uh, the high rate of growth which we expect you know we we are always worried like you know the growth has come down to 4% 5% so high rate of growth is possible if and only if we we make a lot of um, capital formation and that without the government su government support and government share in the capital formation this is this was not very likely and uh, this is a welcome step in, uh, in uh, the government budget uh, especially uh, especially in terms of the crowding in of the private investment uh, because we i, I hope uh, private investment will come in uh, different sectors including the physical infrastructure uh, like uh, railroad and uh, Mm, uh, others and also the digital infrastructure and uh, uh, about the uh, infrastructure for the uh, the portable water and also the housing uh, so a lot of uh, private investment is expected so the time will tell uh, how much we are able to uh, do that or achieve that uh, this is one one part of the story uh, when i look at uh, at from the, from the point of view of the swadeshi the second point i uh, i find uh, the the welcome point welcome um, uh, thing in the budget is that we uh, we are uh, trying to be more and more protective for the domestic industry uh, apart from the protection we are also trying to encourage through production linked incentive schemes more than 2 2 lakh crores were already announced for the the next uh, three, um, in the overall 3 4 years and then uh, the last uh, because we uh, the concerns have been raised by uh, uh, my earlier speakers that uh, the uh, the overall uh, uh, supply is getting hampered uh, also because of the shortage of semiconductors so, uh, so the shortages have been you know uh, uh, flagged by the list speakers but i would like to say that uh, mostly that was due to the uh, made the automobile sector or other sectors it was uh, because of the because of the uh, shortage of semiconductors for which we never thought of producing in our country so uh, about 10 billion dollars uh, of support by the government for semiconductors and uh, also uh, uh, i used to always say tell the concerned ministers that this is no good giving push to the solar energy without there being any solar equipment manufacturing capacity in the country so uh, that that has also been you know uh, got the year and uh, i find uh, 19500 crores being uh, offered for uh, or allocated for the uh, solar um, uh, equipment uh, product manufacturing in the uh, country but uh, uh, mm, while while we are really talking about growth and uh, uh, and uh, uh, raising our capital formation both both the public as well as private uh, we know in the past the private sector has been sitting on huge amount of surpluses, surplus funds, uh, but they were not ready to invest. And uh, during COVID time, again, the uh, the top corporates have um, their profits have been increasing, and many uh, many new uh, billionaires are also uh, taking birth in uh, the country. Lot of, and number of billionaires is increasing and uh, but no investment taking place 
uh, as the numbers show. So uh, if uh, this budget can help uh, raising that uh, capital formation, that will be good. But uh, what I find the, uh, the downside of the budget is that uh, uh, we are not giving enough uh, um, uh, uh, enough uh, um, attention to the creation of more employment opportunities. I'm not talking of jobs. Uh, more employment opportunities uh, because unless or until the jobs are our employment opportunities are not created. Uh, the problem of uh, inequalities will continue to be there. And uh, um, unemployment is the major cause of poverty. So unemployment, poverty, uh, <coughs> inequalities, they are all interrelated. And uh, job creation, the employment creation is the only solution. But uh, over the years, uh, we have given, been giving much emphasis on growth and uh, more on more on the corporate sector, more on the FDI, more on the MNCs. Uh, so uh, obviously, the jobs were not getting created. But uh, 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 and this this budget it's also uh, does talk about uh, growth, does talk about uh, uh, capital formation. But again, the job creation, the employment creation. Uh, did not find uh, the uh, mention in the budget as such. Somebody said that um, e, e, em, employment ka e bhi is me budget me dikhai nahi diya kahi par bolte hue. So, uh, so uh, what uh, we, we suggested even before the budget that uh, uh, we can we can give. Uh, encouragement to the employment creation by giving sort of subsidies to the uh, small scale and also the even the large scale industry uh, where they employ more people where they can be given subsidy. Uh, similarly, uh, if we encourage more and more of small scale MS, MSME sector, especially the micro and small sector, the job creation will automatically take place. Apart from that, uh, 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 since the days of uh, Nehru, we have forgotten about entrepreneurship in the country and uh, hardly any efforts uh, on from the government on entrepreneurship development is taking place. So uh, uh, what we feel and uh, we have even started a campaign for uh, entrepreneurship development. Uh, so what we had been suggesting the government is that, you know, we can, we can start employment, uh, entrepreneurship development centers uh, at the district level so that, you know, the boost for new enterprise startups is one thing and uh, mm, that the government uh, might be doing uh, on its own, but uh, entrepreneurship development centers and creation of job opportunities, creation of employment opportunities in the rural areas, especially the uh, the support to the uh, the uh, allied activities to agriculture, support for the uh, for uh, uh, food uh, processing, support for for uh, the mushroom farming, dairy, and so many. So. Uh, uh, luckily, uh, our uh, dairy sector is quite protected and is developing well. But uh, just in uh, by by encouraging uh, uh, dairy in one or two um, states, we could become the world leader and uh, top topmost producer of uh, dairy products uh, or or milk in the con in the world. So uh, easily we can. Uh, we can be world leader in almost every uh, agricultural produce. Uh, the boost being given to the uh, mm, to the uh, organic and uh, zero budget natural farming uh, will lead to uh, 
reduction in the cost for uh, farmers and also may reduce the uh, content of uh, chemicals in our food plate. Uh, uh, and uh, this is also an encouraging thing that the government is now trying to push the uh, uh, oilseed sector. So um, that can improve our self-reliance in uh, the agricultural produce, especially in the uh, because we have surplus of uh, food grains. Uh, that surplus really benefited us, no doubt about it. In while we were distributing uh, ration to the poor people during the COVID, but uh, so much of surplus of food grains uh, can be avoided by encouraging uh, more of oil seeds. But uh, what I feel is that agriculture, <coughs> uh, we need to give more support to the uh, for the uh, for uh, the constitutions of uh, the FPOs. Uh, we need to reduce the uh, number of uh, 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 you know the limit, uh, which is very high for the farmers. So we we can reduce the. Uh, reduce the number to 50 farmers so that more and more uh, because gathering 300 farmers uh, to form a FPO uh, and a support from the government for uh, the formation of FPOs uh, can also be a welcome step but uh, this uh, uh, this budget has failed to provide that so uh, uh, Mm, I, I'm, I personally, uh, or uh, I'm not in favor of, uh, you know, mm, uh, the doles from the government for uh, uh, in any form. But uh, till the time our people are poor, they are not, and because of the because of the policies of the previous governments or this government, if the people are remaining poor. We, they need to be provided with food, they need to be provided with cash, uh, they need to be provided with uh, Manarega type uh, um, policies, jobs. But uh, we, we need to bring, to bring those policies which can empower people to, to uh, have uh, a meaningful employment which can, which can help uh, uh, raise their incomes so that they can meet their basic requirements till the time we need all such types of uh, uh, supports but uh, personally uh, uh, that that uh, in a way uh, i i feel because government fails to provide for those kinds of policies which can empower people to and and earn enough so that uh, is coming in way of uh, the real welfare of the people. So, uh, mm, so in the times to come, the government, uh, uh, if the government provides more and more of support for self-employment, more and more support for entrepreneurship, uh, more and more support for creating more jobs, then only uh, we can say that uh, we this is a real welfare uh, state so welfare state doesn't mean uh, uh, to my uh, uh, understanding and uh, from the from the point of view of the organization which i am i belong to a uh, welfare state doesn't mean that we the government provides uh, the uh, support or doles for meeting your two ends the government support should be to provide you with an ecosystem, uh, provide you with the support which can help you earn more and more so that you can meet the two ends. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ashwini ji. And I think your, your last, uh, the point, last point you made was particularly important because I think eventually the government will have to uh, make people uh, stand up on their, on, on their own two feet. And uh, this is this is extremely important, and that's why we've been also, uh, you know, uh, emphasizing that in agriculture, you know, these kinds of subsidies is, uh, you know, should be considered as uh, as temporary. I'll, it, eventually, the farmer should be able to uh, earn the right price or get the right price for their produce, uh, and uh, rely less on the government handouts. 
and that kind of environment has to be created through uh, investment in agriculture the appropriate investment in agriculture thank you very much for your views let me uh, now invite uh, professor um kb saxena uh, sir you have the floor <laughs>